everybody, my name is Brittany Peterson and I'm a coach for Peak Run Performance. Uh, today's video we are focusing on pre-run activation drills. As coaches we get a lot of questions from our athletes on is there anything that I can do to maximize my form, my success in my workout or my run, minimize pain or injury risk. Um, and pre-run activation drills can be really helpful. Um, so they, they kind of prime our body for getting our, our muscles activated, getting the muscles firing correctly, reinforcing proper form and just running mechanics. Um, the idea with this workout is to make it efficient, not take up a ton of time, but run through kind of a variety of different exercises to really get you primed up and ready to go. So we'll go into what this um, little routine can look like for you. Exercise number one is our hip flexor stretch. So this is something that can be important for us throughout the day or regularly in our recovery routine. The idea here is to really make sure that we're not dumping our pelvis forward. We're really tucking that pelvis back so we're feeling that entire stretch through that hip flexor. Holding this for 60 seconds. So we can add some components depending on what we need. Uh, Adding a little bit of that side bend and trunk stretch to get through that full chain. The other thing we could add is adding a dynamic of increasing that demand on the quad by bringing that foot back and holding that quad stretch in conjunction to getting that hip flexor stretch. So then obviously we'd set a timer and then we would repeat the same exercises on the other side. You may notice that one side is more restricted than the other, so you can spend a little extra time here if you have one side that is more limited. Adding in that little bit of quad stretch to go with the full hip flexor. Again, 60 seconds. All right, number two is getting down into that bridge position. And here we are working on our lower core activation. So you can see how there would be space under our low back. The idea here is to tighten our lower core and smush that low back into the ground. So we do that 10 times. This is going to get that lower core activation to get our, our hips in the proper position and this is immensely important for proper running dynamics so obviously we're doing this on our backs but it should transfer or it's something we should be mindful of when we are running to kind of maintain that activation and that hip positioning for maximum drive support from our core to power our legs so we just repeat that 10 times So number three, we are going to build off of that bridge position. We're gonna start with those typical double leg bridges. So still looking at bringing that core to the, to that, you know, smooshing that low back. Now we're gonna use our glutes and really push up into that bridge. So maintain holding that core tight while we go through the bridge squeeze using our feet. So again, we'll do 10 of these. Notice how if I lose that uh, low back pressing, I'm going to correct it and maintain it and then think about it more for when I return down so I don't lose that lower core squeeze. From here, we can go right into our next one of adding a little bit of single leg. So still maintaining that position, getting that glute squeeze, really making sure that we are turning on Lower core supporting, hip flexors loose, and glutes firing. This is where so many of us, myself included, shift into our quads way too much. And those are not our powerhouses. We want to use our glutes, which really stems from support at the core, power from the glutes that stems up through the foot. So then we'll switch, find that core. Repeat 
and on each side. All right, so number five, the last thing here from that bridge position, we're just gonna add a little bit of sustained core. So keeping that core tucked and pressed against the ground, we're just gonna add some toe taps or bicycles. But the idea here is getting that leg movement incorporated into that lower core support after we've warmed up the glutes. We should feel a little bit more in our groin, which is our lower core, stabilizing as we add leg movement. So again, 10 on each side. Getting that sustained core activation while we are getting the leg movement. our hip stability as we get drive and power from our legs while we are running. So again, we're on our back. What we should think about when we're running, especially in a warm-up or something, how we can incorporate this position and this activation into our running. All right, this is number six. We are going into a standing activity, which one is getting that power and stability from the foot up into just stabilizing from our core. We're adding a little bit of a stretch, but we're gonna go into ankle pumps. So again, a dynamic position in a sense of maintaining stability while we're doing something else. We can add in circles, we could add in ABCs, but I know I'm feeling the work in my left leg here, the standing leg, while I'm adding a good stretch while I am making sure my ankles are nice and loosened up. So you can do um, formal pumps times 10, circles one way, circles another way, whatever you have time to do or whatever your weaknesses are, and then switch over to that other side. So again, make sure your lower core is activated because that's gonna give you support. That's gonna work on that connection between the foot and the, the glutes while we're getting that stability from our core while we are focusing on something else. So notice I went circles both directions, up and down. My mindset is kind of whatever feels good, whatever your body is telling you it needs, or you can have kind of a, a more strict routine. All right, from here, number seven. So we are gonna go into calf raises. So if you have a ledge, you can add in, you can do this both feet. One, the idea is not to pump your calves, but it's just to get an idea of that big toe push off, the strength and mobility in the quads and the Achilles. You could add some single leg if you wanted to or needed to, but the idea is just a little bit of range of motion here, um, times 10 repetitions. You can add your various patterns or Double leg single leg. All right, number eight, we're gonna get a little bit of combining everything together. So this is where I like side steps from a squatted position. So the idea would be, I'm, I'm kind of limiting this because of my frame, but I would do 10 one direction and then 10 the other direction. So make sure again, holding that core tight making sure you feel your glutes doing the work. So 10 one way, 10 the other way. Staying in that slightly squatted position, making sure we've got the proper areas turned on. All right, and then we have number nine. So we're building off of what we just did. So instead of just staying low, we're gonna add a step, squat, step, squat, squat, and so doing the same thing of again, 10 one way, 10 the other, but it's almost like we're still doing that sidestepping, but it's like we're going under a little fence line or something. So here we're getting a little bit more of that quad involvement, but we're still getting that lower core tightness and then that glute activation combining that little bit of the, like adductor work and stability and power through the feet, plus ankle range of motion. 
And last but not least, number 10, just doing a little bit of squats. So again, making sure I'm holding my core tight, I'm getting my glute activated, glutes activated, and I'm just doing 10 squats with that proper form to make sure that now we're in standing, we've done a little bit more dynamic work, we're just making sure that our lower core is really cemented on and our glutes are firing, and this can help us kind of pay attention. Are we getting symmetry between each leg? And do we need to work on something more specifically later on? All right, go have a great run now that we are primed and ready to go. And more importantly, thank you for dealing with my sidekick, my helper, and one of my bestest running buddies, Onyx. All right, we'll see you guys later.